So what is it about avid readers that make them so special? In our video today, we take a look inside the mind of book lovers and give you nine psychological traits that they share. And since these are all great traits to have, they give you a jolly good reason to pick up a book. Hi, I'm Talia Newland, the Managing Editor at Alkira Publishing. And I'm Rose Newland, the Book Designer at Alkira Publishing. People who read a lot are different from non-readers. Yeah, they <coughs> read a lot of books. Yeah, not just that, um, but avid readers also share certain mental and emotional traits. Hmm. Are these traits they always had that made them want to read a lot or traits that they get from reading? Good question. I think both. Some traits uh, make you more inclined to be an avid reader and uh, you develop some from reading. Uh, you're an avid reader, aren't you? I'd say so. I read uh, a book a week, a novel a, a week. Wow. Yeah, and that's outside of my um, work. Reading you do for work. <laughs> yeah. I was an avid reader as a, as a child, always had a book. Um, I was reading the Russian novelists Dostoevsky and Tolstoy under the desk as a high school student. Wow. What about you? Do you consider yourself an avid reader? I... I fell out of reading a little bit after university because I had to do so much of it. But through childhood, as a kid, I was always reading. I was reading well above my level a lot of the time. Um, recently got back into it, though, which is very fun. So the first shared trait of avid readers is enhanced empathy and open-mindedness. I suppose that's because you're often engaging with different characters, different perspectives, different emotional experiences. Like, you can discover what it's like to be a hitman in the mob. Yeah. Or you get empathy for people living in Israel and Palestine from yeah, this book. That's right. And you get a lot of knowledge about the situation. Mm. And that fosters an open-minded approach to life because it allows readers to see the world through different perspectives, mm. um, helps them understand complex social and emotional dynamics. For example, you could learn how someone becomes homeless and mm. what it's like to live as a homeless person mm. in Maslow's basement, this book. And the same one, Sunrise, it's about recovering from childhood abuse. So there's a different perspective. The second shared psychological trait of avid readers is creative thinking. Exposure to diverse ideas and scenarios can lead to out-of-the-box thinking. Fantastical worlds inspire readers to think beyond what is considered normal. So fiction shapes our minds to imagine the impossible, encouraging us to be creative problem solvers in real life. I mean, I think I'm already a creative problem solver, but I don't know whether that came from reading a lot. So. Yeah, yeah it's, it's that, you know. <laughs> yeah, which came first. That is both. Um, number three is an enhanced vocabulary. Reading, especially as a child, doesn't just transport us to different worlds. It also introduces us to new words. Fiction books often use um, rich and varied language, words that seep into our subconscious and become part of our personal word bank. So if you're an avid reader, you're likely to have a more nuanced and diverse vocabulary than your peers. Um, I have been told, for instance, that I use big words. When I was a high school teacher, one of the kids said, Mr. Do people really talk like you do? Mm. Yeah, and I remember when I was a kid, I was often reading books that were well above my reading level, and I would always be like, Mum, what does this word mean? Mm. Or I'd have to mm. go look them up. So it definitely broadened my vocabulary at a young age. Mm. Number four is a love of solitude, enjoying the quiet and reflective nature of reading. A cosy spot to read, a cup of tea or coffee or wine. That would be one trait that readers probably have anyway, the love of solitude, rather than developing through reading. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Reading the way to give yourself that solitude. that solitude. Yeah. Solitude. yeah. And alone time allows you to recharge and find peace in what is a, a fast paced world. Which is very good for people's overall well being and mental health. Absolutely. And it's especially good for people with autism where being able to completely block out the unside, outside world and sit in a quiet, safe space is essential. Um, but for anyone, it's a great way to have a break. This leads us to number five, escapism and stress relief. This one is a huge reason why avid readers read and definitely why I read. Escapism from the pressures of everyday life. Immersing yourself in different worlds offers a mental break that can reduce stress and provide a sense of calm, especially in chaotic times. Yes, I love to disappear into a different world entirely and immerse myself in other people's problems. Like, yes. somewhat lost if you wake up in a spaceship and somewhere <laughs> random. Like, yeah. what's, what's or 
realm travelers where you can jump through a portal oh. in the forest and end up in a parallel universe. Yes, but not just fantasy worlds. Anything that's different to your own uh, life. Um, and for instance, the lion hunt, this is a world of a woman detective chasing the bad guys. Well, that's not my life. Nope, but you can be a badass detective in another life. I can, exactly. Do with her problems instead of your own. Yeah, and you're just along for the ride. So, you know, it's not stressful. Yeah. You could also go to Ireland in the 1960s or New Orleans in the 1950s. Mm, great books. So the sixth of the shared psychological traits of readers is emotional resilience. By experiencing characters' challenges, triumphs and failures, you live vicariously through the characters and learn how to cope with various emotions, which helps you to be better equipped to, to handle such situations in your own life. For instance, with the Samaritan's Patient, it's a girl who runs a social media platform that turns toxic and how she handles that might not be how you handle it or how you'd handle it but it's really interesting to see how she handles and particularly how she handles the guilt or in Akata which we didn't publish but I'm currently reading where <laughs> Feyre learns to uh, overcome her trauma through painting right yeah you don't know that because you have to <laughs> No, anyway. but that, 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 that's good. Yeah. The seventh shared psychological trait of readers is strong observational skills and attention to detail. Reading requires attention to detail and the ability to follow complex narratives, which sharpens your observational skills in real life. Also, if you're reading a book like Sherlock Holmes, where you yeah. <laughs> really put the clues together. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Uh, avid readers often <clears throat> notice subtleties that others may overlook, making them more perceptive in various contexts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the eighth trait uh, that avid readers share is good concentration. Mm. So when you're engrossed in a gripping storyline, you're training your brain to focus on one thing for an extended period of time. So this ability to concentrate filters into other areas of your life. So it's really helpful if you can inspire children with ADHD to want to read. Emphasis on inspire and you've got to find the right books for them so they are inspired yes. but I think it really helped with my ADHD this this concentration on mm. reading so the ninth shared psychological trait of readers is lifelong curiosity and desire for knowledge readers tend to have an insatiable curiosity always seeking new information new books to read new stories and experiences yeah and this love of learning drives them us avid readers to constantly look for new books. We want to keep our minds engaged and we are continually expanding our horizons. That's what reading does for us. Speaking of expanding your horizons, in the between <laughs> state you can learn about lucid dreaming and astral travel. Mm. I read this one a bit while I was formatting it and I'm quite, quite excited to actually read it properly. Um, there's also the Transcendence of Celeste Kelly, which is all about quantum consciousness. Yeah, which is, yeah. In uh, a story. Which in a is, story, in a fiction story. Yeah, which is a way, great way to, to learn about it. Entertainment. And certainly expands your horizon. Definitely. That one, definitely. And historical fiction is a great way of learning. Edutainment. Yeah, for instance, Ivy, the indenture of Ivy O'Neill is about um, a little known aspect of uh, American and Irish history. And then there's I Ain't Afraid, which is about uh, a Wild West cowgirl who had a career in showbiz in the early 1900s. Again, great way to learn about um, history. And this one is actually a biography of a real person. It's mm. not fiction. Yeah. And historical fiction can even be fun, like the satirical Everything Goes to the Dogs, where you can learn about how an ill-conceived political change in the 80s and 90s adversely affected academia in Australia. This one's very funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's actually affecting politics today in terms of education, so very good for Australian readers. Mm. So that's the nine shared psychological traits of avid readers. One, enhanced empathy and open-mindedness. Two, creative thinking. Three, enhanced vocabulary. Four, a love of solitude. Five, using escapism for stress relief. Five, um, uh, six. Seven, six, emotional resilience. 
good observational skills, good concentration, curiosity and a desire to learn. If you're an avid reader, do you think you have these traits because you read so much or do you think you had these traits beforehand? Do you even think you have these traits? Do you agree with us? <laughs> it's a bit hard to tell for most of us who've been reading from such a young age, but let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to check out all these wonderful books that we mentioned and others uh, in the Our Books section of our website. Our Care Publishing only publishes the best. Link in the description. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. See you next time. Bye.